This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. On this video, we multiply and simplify the following problems. They are multi-step because it's just more than two things multiplied together. All right, let's say we need to simplify this polynomial. What we really have are three factors, 4, an x minus 5, and an x plus 2. So for instance, this is like if I said, well, how about if I want you to multiply 4 times 5 times 2? That would be something with three factors. And we have the commutative and associative properties of multiplication where it really doesn't matter which two we multiply together first, but we can do two of those together first and then multiply by the third. So for instance, one way to do this is we can go left to right. We could do 4 times 5, and that's 20. And then we do the 20 times 2, which is 40. Okay. Somebody else might say, well, I want to do 5 times 2 first. That's okay also. 4 times 10, that'll give you 40. And in fact, since it's multiplication, you can also, if you want, multiply these two numbers together first, 4 times 2 rearrange the order, and 8 times 5 is also 40. But notice what we don't do. We don't multiply by, by the 5 and the 2 and then multiply that together. What would happen if you did that? This is a common mistake. Watch out. It, 4 times 5 is 20, and 4 times 2 is 8, and then that would give us 160, which is way bigger than the real answer of 40. So be careful, there is no distributive property here at all. Distributive property is when you have one thing out in front and a sum or difference inside and that you distribute to each thing inside the parentheses before you add. Very, very different. Okay, so let's go back up to this problem. So how can we do this? Well, we have three factors, so we can factor uh, multiply two factors together at a time, and it's up to you which two you do. I like to do the FOIL method first on these two factors, but we'll do this more than one way so you can see you'll get the same answer no matter what. So I have this 4 out here, and now I'm going to multiply x minus 5 times x plus 2. So what happens when I do that? Let's do the FOIL method. We have x times x, that's x squared. The outer term, x times 2, is plus 2x. The inner term is negative 5x. And the last term, negative 5 times 2, is negative 10. Now, I'm certain that some of you don't need to write that 2x minus 5x, and you simplify it in your head by adding 2x minus 5x to get x squared minus 3x minus 10. That's perfect. You also don't have to use the FOIL method. I've shown many ways to multiply binomials. Okay, so what we did was we multiplied those two terms together. We simplify it, and now we have to do 4 times that, and now we do have to use the distributive property. So we have 4 times x squared minus 4 times 3x minus 4 times 10. These are all unlike terms, so this will be our final answer. Now, what if instead you wanted to do this by just going left to right? You want to do the 4 times the x minus 5 first. That's also fine. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. There we go. All right, so we can see the steps we did it that way. And now let's do this problem going left to right. So we have 4 times x minus 5 times x plus 2. Let's go ahead and multiply these together first. All right, those two factors. So I'm going to have to do the distributive property. That'll give me 4 times x, which is 4x minus 4 times 5, which is 20. And now I have to remember to multiply that times the x plus 2. 
So now I'm going to use the distributive property. So we have 4x times x, that's the first. The outer, 4x times 2. The inner, negative 20 times x. And the last, negative 20 times 2. I have the two like terms in the middle here, 8 minus 20, so that's going to give me the negative 12x for a middle term. And you notice I get the same answer. If you'd like, you could also see what happens if you multiply 4 times x plus 2 first and then take that answer and multiply it by x plus 5. That's okay as well. All right, let's go on to another problem. All right, what if we have a 2x times a 3x plus 4 squared, right? And it says simplify. Well, this is in factored form, right? First, remember 3x plus 4 squared means 3x plus 4 times 3x plus 4. And again, there really are four factors. There's a 2, there's an x, there's a 3x plus 4, and there's a 3x plus 4. But a lot of times we just think of this 2x as just sort of one, since it's one monomial out in front as one factor. So this time, let's go ahead and go left to right. So we'll do the 2x times the 3x plus 4. We'll multiply that together first. So what's that give me? 2x times 3x. That will give me 6x squared. And then we have a 2x times 4 plus, right? 2x times 4 is 8x. So I've multiplied the first two terms together. And now I have to multiply that by this other 3x plus 4. And now we have a binomial times a binomial. So we could do the FOIL method. Why don't you put it on pause and try this on your own and then come back and see if you get the same answer I get. So we have 6x squared times 3x. That's going to be 18x cubed. The outer term is going to be plus 24x squared. And the inner term is going to also be plus 24x squared. And the last term, 8x times 4, will be 32x. So if we add the like terms, the two middle terms, or the, the x squared terms, can be added together, combined. We have 18x cubed plus 48x squared plus 32x. So that's one way to do this problem. Now what do you think the other way is? Well. If you want, you could do the 3x plus 4 squared first and then just do the distributive property at the end of the problem. So why don't you try that? So you have 2x times, now not, I know not everybody writes it out this way, that's fine. If you want to use the formula for squaring a binomial, that's fine. But how about multiplying those together first? And after you do that, you're, so whatever that is, you're going to put in parentheses and then you're going to multiply it by 2x. So I'll leave you a minute to do that. Okay, I'm going to use the formula. So 3x times 3x is 9x squared. Now, let's do the outer and the inner terms together. 3x times 4 is 12x and the inner term is also 12x. That's 24x which of course from the formula we say 2ab it's 2 times 3x times 4. That's another way to get that 24x plus 4 times 4 is 16. That's your last term squared. Now what if you distribute your 2x? Well 2x times 9x squared is, there it is, 18x cubed up here. Right? 2x times 24x is going to give you plus 48x squared and plus 2x times 16 is plus your 32x. So, got the same answer either way. So, this is a multi-step problem when you have more than just two things to multiply together. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.